Chapter One, in which we are introduced to Winnie the Pooh and some bees, and the stories begin. Here is Edward Bear coming downstairs now, bump, bump, bump on the back of his head behind Christopher Robin. It is, as far as he knows, the only way of coming downstairs, but sometimes he feels that there really is another way, if only he could stop bumping for a moment and think of it. And then he feels that perhaps there isn't. Anyhow, here he is at the bottom and ready to be introduced to you. Winnie the Pooh. When I first heard his name, I said, just as you are going to say, but I thought he was a boy. So did I, said Christopher Robin. Then you can't call him Winnie. I don't. But you said, he's Winnie the Pooh. Don't you know what the means? Ah, yes, now I do. I said quickly, and I hope you do too, because it is all the explanation you're going to get. Sometimes Winnie the Pooh likes a game of some sort when he comes downstairs, and sometimes he likes to sit quietly in front of the fire and listen to a story. This evening, what about a story, said Christopher Robin. What about a story, I said. Could you very sweetly tell Winnie the Pooh one? I suppose I could, I said. What sort of stories does he like? About himself, because he's that sort of bear. Oh, I see. Could you very sweetly? I'll try, I said. So I tried. Once upon a time. A very long time ago now, about last Friday, Winnie the Pooh lived in a forest all by himself under the name of Sanders. What does under the name mean? asked Christopher Robin. It means he had the name over the door in gold letters and lived under it. Winnie the Pooh wasn't quite sure, said Christopher Robin. Now I am, said a growly voice. Then I will go on, said I. One day, when he was out walking, he came to an open place in the middle of the forest, and in the middle of this place was a large oak tree, and from the top of the tree there came a loud buzzing noise. Winnie the Pooh sat down at the foot of the tree, put his head between his paws and began to think. First of all, he said to himself, that buzzing noise means something. You don't get a buzzing noise like that, just buzzing and buzzing, without its meaning something. If there's a buzzing noise, somebody's making a buzzing noise. And the only reason for making a buzzing noise that I know of is because you're a bee. Then he thought another long time and said, And the only reason for being a bee that I know of is making honey. And then he got up and said, and the only reason for making honey is so I can eat it. So he began to climb the tree. He climbed, and he climbed, and he climbed. And as he climbed, he sang a little song to himself. It went like this. Isn't it funny how a bear likes honey? Buzz, buzz, buzz. I wonder why he does. 
Then he climbed a little further and a little further and then just a little further. By that time he thought of another song. It's a very funny thought that if bears were bees, they'd build their nests at the bottom of trees. And that being so, if the bees were bears, we shouldn't have to climb up all these stairs. He was getting rather tired by this time. So that is why he sang a complaining song. He was nearly there now, as if he just stood on that branch. Crack! Oh, help! said Pooh as he dropped ten feet onto the branch below him. If only I hadn't, he said as he bounced twenty feet onto the next branch. You see what I meant to do, he explained as he turned head over heels and crashed onto another branch thirty feet below. What I meant to do? Uh, of course it was rather, he admitted as he slithered very quickly through the next six branches. It all comes, I suppose, he decided as he said goodbye to the last branch, spun round three times and flew gracefully into a gorse bush. It all comes of liking honey so much. Oh, help. He crawled out of the gorse bush, brushed the prickles from his nose and began to think again. And the first person he thought of was Christopher Robin. Was that me? said Christopher Robin in an awed voice, hardly daring to believe it. That was you. Christopher Robin said nothing, but his eyes got larger and larger and his face got pinker and pinker. So Winnie the Pooh went round to his friend, Christopher Robin, who lived behind a green door in another part of the forest. Good morning, Christopher Robin, he said. Good morning, Winnie the Pooh, said you. I wonder if you've got such a thing as a balloon about you. A balloon? Yes. I just said to myself coming along, I wonder if Christopher Robin has such a thing as a balloon about him. I just said it to myself thinking of balloons and wondering. What do you want a balloon for? You said. Winnie the Pooh looked round to see that nobody was listening, put his paw to his mouth, and said in a deep whisper, Honey. But you don't get honey with balloons. I do, said Pooh. Well, it just happened that you had been to a party the day before at the house of your friend Piglet, and you had balloons at the party. You had had a big green balloon and one of Rabbit's relations had a big blue one and had left it behind, being really too young to go to a party at all. And so you had brought the green one and the blue one home with you. Which one would you like? You asked Pooh. He put his head between his paws and thought very carefully. It's like this, he said. When you go after honey with a balloon, the great thing is not to let the bees know you're coming. Now, if you have a green balloon, they might think you were only part of the tree and not notice you. And if you had a blue balloon, they might think you were only part of the sky and not notice you. And the question is, which is most likely? Wouldn't they notice you underneath the balloon? You asked. They might, or they might not, said Winnie the Pooh. You never can tell with bees. He thought for a moment and said, I shall try to look like a small black cloud. That will deceive them. 